Yeah, I definitely do. So um, next up, we have Federico Hakamani, and uh, he is a Brazilian, a Pomerense, an Engrocker, fan of good software, Legos. He's a brewmaster, and he is, I can confirm, a jack of all trades, but I refuse to say the part of his bio that he put forward, which is master of none. He's mastered a lot of things. And um, I'm really glad that he's going to uh, speak for us here today. Um, he and I work together at Okta, and uh, we, we've talked at various conferences, and he's an all-around great guy in addition to being an amazing technologist. And we were, we were having fun with Engrock before, before he uh, went, went to work for Engrock. So it's cool to see you there now, too, Federico. Let's, uh, let's bring him in. There yeah. he is. Hi, folks. Good morning, good evening. I don't, know, I don't know where you are. I know this is happening around the world. Around the world. So happy to be here. So happy to see familiar faces. Uh, thanks for the intro, man. And yeah, I'll say I'm a master of none. I, I try to master stuff by tripping to some things. Um, uh, I'm here to talk about some, some, one of these. We're not the, the tripping at, tripping at. It's webhooks. It's, it's so fun. <laughs> so hope you guys can see my screen. Can you? Not yet. Not oh, yet. You need to share okay. your that's screen okay. and then we can add it to the stream. I We're also getting a little bit of echo. Oh, oh, I'm getting echo. Let's see if it gets better now. Uh, is it better now? There we go. Okay. <laughs> Audio. Right. So shall we uh, kick it off? You ready to go? Yeah. All Let's right. Do it. All right. There kick we go. Away. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for being here. I'm here to talk about to talk about ways to make hook security better. My name is Fred. Again, I work at Engrock, uh, um, and I'm here to touch to touch three things. First, just a quick recap of webhooks in, in security side. So there are some things on the architecture that that are when it comes to security. Second, uh, show you some of the finds. Oh, I'm getting some reverb. Um, let's see. Let me switch to the built-in mic. Yeah, good idea, Randall. Okay. <laughs> Just you know, a little little visit from the demo monster. It happens. Oh yeah, uh, it happens to me all the time. Is this better? I think okay. it is better. Okay, cool. Wow, Bluetooth is winning wire today. Um, okay, so continuing with where we were. Um, my goal is to go through three things, just a quick recap of webhooks, more from the security side, show you some findings of a research we did with over 100 different webhook implementations, and talk about things you can do to make webhook security better, whether you are a listener and you're consuming those, whether you are serving others with that. And with that together, in the third item, actually give you some action or give you some things to do to help the community make better webhook security. So let's get going. Uh, this is a quick presentation. I'm going to share this link with you later so you can have access to the DAX. Um, as webhooks, starting with a quick intro, many people already are familiar with webhooks because if you see them, you love them, right? Webhooks are one of the best things ever, most important things. Uh, it allows you to build applications that react to events. So instead of, let's say, for a traditional API, if you're integrating with video, Go and ask Twilio all the time, hey, do you have a new message I can work on? You just send an URL to Twilio, say, tell me when it happens instead of me calling you all the time. Twilio sends you that. It's great for Twilio. It's great for you because there's no overhead. There, there isn't a bunch of calls going on. However, that changes the game a little bit in terms of security. The first thing is that most of the security responsibilities that would typically go with the to Elio side of things, let's say the provider, it goes to the consumer. So in a pooling strategy, Twilio is checking your authentication for keys, it's checking your OAuth, they implement DDoS and all bunch of things. Whereas on the webhooks, that responsibility most of the times relies on the listener side. And the second thing is that related to this, is that you don't necessarily need to do all the security stuff in order to be successful or functional, if you will. So this is me creating a something to do crazy stuff with my CD. If I get a webhook notification from GitHub, 
And because I'm a lazy developer, I didn't do a bunch of stuff on security. There's just a to-do for V2. And that's actually uh, bad in terms of security. I'm not even doing authentication. The these ones are fairly you know if you're familiar with webhooks, but there's a third caveat. There are so many different ways to secure webhooks. And it's so easy to ignore that because when you think of webhooks, you think of simplicity. Uh, so at NGROC, my current gig, we started implementing webhook integrations for service we're doing over there, uh, module. And the first time we started scoping for this work, we were like, yeah, it's going to be simple. We're going to do a bunch of those, but after going through many different of those as a responsible developer, we started seeing some differences that makes work, make work for us a little bit harder. Uh, and it lights the bulb in our heads. So the first thing is that when starting implementing security for webhooks, seven out of 10 webhooks will present some differences. Even with most webhooks using uh, HMAC signatures, so you sign the body, you send it over and use that as a way of doing authentication and message integrity. Many do in different ways. So half will use, will do encoding with base64, the other half with hex. They will, they will hash different parts of the message. It goes all over. And only a few percentage of webhooks will implement more controls, which you should be leveraging as a listener. So it gets very hard to do it right. And as a responsible developer as well, because uh, security do not necessarily stand in between the success and getting that webhook call done, done uh, you end up having to read a bunch more docs and have to build a much more than just like getting that get started and run with it. So the getting started will just get you to understand the webhook message, but adding security around that and in the right way requires you to go through a bunch of different documentations and explore how that thing will work. So yeah, uh, nice. Thank you for showing you all the problems we have in the world. What we can do to fix this? So the best way we could think, we could think about when we tackle this problem, when we look at that, we started actually cataloging those things as we were implementing the integrations ourselves. We thought that while we cannot change the world, we can make it a little bit better to help people spot the patterns and see how good it looks like. That's in a website called webhooks.fyi that you can go and check it out yourself. I'm gonna go through some of the findings we got from this place and share some easy ways and strategies you can do better webhook as a listener or as a consumer or as a society. Starting with the provider. So if you are a SaaS service or if you are creating your service and you wanna send webhooks to people, these are some of the things you can do that are very easy to do uh, in general and that will help people a lot. Providing amazing documentation is quite obvious, always good, implement security. When you send a message as well, don't treat that just as a responsibility to the listener. There are things you can do in this front. Improve secret keys, strong encryption and hashing, signature payload, leverage the payload and signature, not only for body, but headers. Implement replay prevention, versioning and compensatory controls. Uh, the list things like a shopping list, like how do I do this? How do I get this right? Uh, the suggestion here is to copy from the grades. Um, there are many great patterns implemented throughout the industry, not necessarily consistently, but when you go through those things, let's say webhook security, and you see things like how do I do one-time verification or how do I build amazing documentation? You can go through webhooks FYI and see what you need to do or what are the grades to copy from. Great example of that, Square will tell you how to, which events you can listen to, how you should subscribe to events, or Stripe does a great job with telling you how to retry a webhook when something doesn't go right insecurely. Copy the grades, you should be good on that front. Use this as a catalog for you. As a listener, these are some of the best practices you can do. Um, use HTTPS, Ensure you, you are actually leveraging security rather than just putting in the to-do like I did with my Node.js app. Restrict access by IP, storing secret segmenting, rotating, using robust algorithms, calling back the service if you're not sure, 
And one thing you will notice is that many of these patterns are the same patterns you're using when developing safe web apps or APIs. So if you pay attention very well to those endpoints you're providing, you should have that same level of attention to how you listen to the world. There are some things as an industry that's a little bit hard to do, but it's important to do. So there are some standards. Uh, you're seeing some of the most popular ones here. Uh, you can see the IETF HTTP message signatures, which is very promising. So they are trying to uh, create a spec for signing HTTP messages because HTTP message signature is the most popular authentication mechanism in webhooks. It will certainly influence uh, the whole industry in the right direction. Same goes with cloud events. They are both trying to do the same thing. So one is IETF, the other one is by the Cloud Native Foundation. Um, also, there are other things specific to security, like the OpenID share signals and secrets and the REST hooks. It's an initiative from that year. Uh, this is something that's going on here. Because there are many standards, there is a, let's say, a, a arms race here to see who's going to win or who's going to be the most prevalent one. Uh, as an individual, you can contribute to some of those, or you can actually help build awareness yourself. Here are some of the ways to, to help out the, the industry. Um, everybody that develops a webhook or consumes a webhook uh, is in a unique position. If you're a responsible developer, you will need to do some of those things we talked about, right? You will need to parse the documentation figure out the things that needs to be used and how to use them. So if you're in the middle of doing that, go to the places where these things are being cataloged and tell the world about it. It could be both in Webhooks FYI and also the awesome Webhook list from Re Real Adele that's really, really good. Actually, we, we recommend that as well as a great place. And if you're a provider, follow the good patterns, uh, see what good looks like from other providers, and also list your provider, uh, show proud that uh, you're there. Um, this is my call for you to action. Uh, go and, and figure out, help us out. I'm here to answer any questions you have about webhook security. I can go into some of these deep items for you, tell some of our findings. We have that in a blog as well that I'm gonna share. Uh, we walk through all the different patterns, all the things that are right, the things that are actually kind of scary and even uh, frustrating about the experience. Uh, with that, I'll pass it back for questions. Hey, thanks for that, Federico. Amazing um, talk. I, I, I dropped in a quick question. Would you say on the slide where you were showing the various standards like OpenID and HTTP, would you say any one of them is ahead of any other at this point? Like is one kind of emerging um, as a leader? I many of those right now they are on on the draft specs and they are on on like open for comments. I really like the IETF message signature and the cloud event. It's it's hard to pick a fake one. They they are very good. They are doing things that are very hard to do. Um, I'll give you a good example. So cloud events they they are very opinionated about. Uh, including your payload and signature, the header in a certain kind of header. So uh, let's say you're making a, a webhook call, like the message tells you some information that you should be taking forward, but the header might tell that many times. Great example is a timestamp. So headers typically carry a timestamp to, re to prevent replay attacks. Cloud events is very opinionated about the timestamp. It says it should be Unix. Uh, so that like takes a lot of hesitation on how it should do. And you should uh, include these headers as part of your signature. And then there's versioning as well. So I, I really like their work over there. Uh, I'm not saying IETF is not doing a great job as well. Uh, so it's, it's an arms race. It, it's great for the industry. Yeah, I great, thank you. I've been using webhooks for a long time and I've seen just in terms of like security patterns over the years, things have sort of shifted. I remember originally when webhooks were first sort of gaining popularity, there was no concept of validating a request or figuring out who sent it. 
Um, I think eventually people sort of move to like having a shared key sort of model. Um, yeah. Do you think, like, what do you think is happening in terms of the security side of webhooks just in the future, given all the changes that have been happening in the last handful of years? Yeah, um, webhooks, they, they are a very interesting space because like the mission number one, two and three is building for simplicity, which I, I honestly love, uh, but it also makes security challenging at some time. So I see hashing hashes is still as a great way of doing that. Some, some implementations are trying to add uh, OAuth, you know, trying to add things like that, 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 that's amazing at one place because if you use, let's say, jocks, uh, it's great because there's key rotation happens automatically, but OAuth is hard to implement. So um, what you're seeing in the marketplace these days is like hashing of more things in things that add additional security. So timestamps is an example, versioning is another one. Um, there are many, many interesting implementations out there. There are some people also using just the JWK part to distribute keys. That's really sweet and interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, but there is still a lot of things using basic authentication out there. Uh, I believe in our research, we found 15% of implementations using it. A bunch of implementations using SHA-1 and hash signatures, that's kind of scary. I actually have a couple of production services I run as hobby projects, which are still using basic auth for a variety of these things. <laughs> yeah. Probably not the best um, <laughs> Yes. Um, compensatory control. What are some of those here URL? Yeah, well, share those with us live right now. Right yeah, now. Let's, let's share it right now. <laughs> <laughs> don't think so. Uh, I, I don't want to... I. I don't want to tell which ones, but I can tell you where to look at. Uh, there's a webhook directory in webhooks.fyi, and you can look at the signing algorithm using used by own, some of those and the security controls they're implementing or not. Um, while this should be used for good, uh, it can also provide you some information on things that need the, the step up. Ouch. Awesome. <laughs> well, do we have any additional questions? Or if you have any additional questions for Frederico, please drop them in the chat right now before we pull in our next speaker. Um, I also did see someone suggested uh, people check out this uh, awesome yes. webhooks repository on GitHub. So thank you for sharing that. And um, yeah, if there's anything else you want to plug, Frederico, are there any cool projects you think people should check out or blogs they should read or people they should follow on Twitter, this is your chance to uh, get the plug out there. Yeah, uh, awesome webhooks is is a great place to go for. Uh, we draw, we, we got a lot of inspiration from there. Um, as for the great examples, uh, I really like what um, Stripe is doing. Zoom came up with a brand new webhook implementation that's very elegant as well. Uh, and there are a lot of great people catching up fast. So um, HubSpot is doing a great job with versioning. Uh, these are some like examples. I wish I could point at one example and say like, follow this company. They're doing amazing work, but unfortunately that doesn't exist today, which goes to show that we have a lot to do with web hooks in terms of security. But um, those are some of the cool things I can point you towards. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming by. It's so good to see you and amazing talk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks again. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, so great seeing you all. Um, all right. Yeah. See you, Frederico. Good seeing you, Fred.